Let's bowls, find my only talk packs on the end pros. Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today. And some people may think I'd be happy about this story due to the fact that Nines dissed the channel in a song once. But that is not what the channel is about. I'd never kick a person when they're down. And it's always about being fair and constructive and trying to learn from what has occurred. I've supported artists for the past three years on this channel that have come out of prison and turned their lives around. And of course, there's a lot of money to be made in music. But there is also a lot of temptation to return back to the roads as well. The latest developments in the case regarding Nines is that he's pleaded guilty in relation to an EncroChat case. The first time I did this story, we didn't have the details in regard to EncroChat, but now they've released that information to the media. And they say the rapper known as Courtney Freckleton pleaded guilty in court to drugs and money laundering charges on Thursday. He appeared at Harrow Crown Court in North West London alongside Jason Thompson, who's 35 years old. The pair admitted to importing Class B drug cannabis into the UK from Poland and Spain and conspiracy to transfer criminal cash between the 10th of March and July the 3rd. They said one of the plots was successful and they attempted a second one and the amount of cannabis alleged to have been involved in both of them was 28 kilos. Nines and Thompson both denied two further charges of conspiracy to supply cannabis and conspiracy to supply cocaine and the prosecutor Geneva Reed said they will not be seeking a trial on those charges. And I've seen a lot of people talking about why that could possibly happen and what you have to understand with EncroChat is that the police have access to absolute Absolutely everything so they could be trying to bring charges against them simply based on a conversation them talking about selling cocaine or something like that in a court of law with the other charges they've got against them drugs and money I think the court would rather focus on that than trying to prove a case just based on messages that is just my opinion and it's not a hundred percent but of course some people have speculated otherwise the money laundering charge the pair face amounted to a £98,000 debt as well as the value of the drugs. The pair were arrested in June after raids across London, Burham Wood and Hertfordshire and the police operation is understood to have come from messages intercepted on EncroChat. So this means that he would have been arrested last year back in June at the beginning of the raids when 774 people were arrested across the UK. And he hasn't mentioned this in any way, shape or form to the fans. And he's done interviews since then as well. I wouldn't be surprised if the police actually release some, some actual messages because this is what they do as well. And for him to plead guilty, there must have been a lot of evidence very early on in the case. And of course, absolutely nobody that was arrested had any idea this was about to happen. This isn't just a basic mistake. This was a communication network that was infiltrated by the French police. And I have documented it heavily over the past year from the very moment that he broke. So there's a lot of different aspects to highlight in this story and it's definitely something you won't see shared by Grime Daily. If you're going to promote the glamorous lifestyles that are gained from any sort of crimes, you must also highlight the risks that are associated to it. And this also gives the kids an idea, like all rappers do, is succeed and there's no risks. Police arrested over 770 people and seized £54 million in cash when they was able to crack the EncroChat system and intercept millions of messages from drug kimpins around the world. There were 60,000 users of EncroChat worldwide and 10,000 of them was in the UK. The police say that the sole use of the phone was to plan and coordinate the distribution of illegal drugs, money laundering and also plotting to kill rival criminals. The messaging platform was infiltrated by agencies in France and I've documented this a lot in the playlist that you can go and watch to catch up on all the little details from all the individual cases. Officials said in the UK they prevented murders, kidnappings and also millions of pounds worth of drugs from making it to the street. In London alone, 1,400 EncroChat users were found. The Metropolitan Police said the operation enabled them to foil an assassination plot in June and arrest a would-be gunman as well. Scotland Yard said they had detained members of organised crime gangs in the capital and also seized millions of pounds worth of cash from them as well. 
Nikki Holland from the NCA said, The infiltration of EncroChat has given them the deepest insight into the criminal underworld that the police have ever had. The devices were EncroChat phones, and there was mobiles that claimed to have given the owner complete anonymity. They had built-in secure operating systems, encrypted messaging and calls, and self-destructing texts as well, and even a panic wipe function. The product was priced at £1,500 for six months per contract, and it attracted organised crime groups from around the world. EncroChat phones became popular in 2017, onwards following the takedown of rival BlackBerry PGP. EncroChat phones, the NCA said, were a requirement for organised criminals in the underworld, and this helped people to obtain drugs, guns, and also large amounts of money laundering. The network was used to enforce drug debts and also fighting turf wars over competing markets and making threats and planning attacks and even assassinations. An EncroChat enabled phone was previously used by a hitman who killed John Kinsella and also Paul Massey in 2018. I did a full length documentary on the murder of Paul Massey as well. The NCA said that criminals spoke openly on the network because they believed that nobody was able to read the messages. It was only when EncroChat sent a message to all the users that the system had been compromised. The police then began to raid everybody. So as I've spoken about before, Nines was an award winning artist and he'd just recently gone number one with his latest album. He has also heavily been involved in the direction of his music videos. In a short film on his channel, he spoke about his brother dying when he turned 18, and also the death of his father. These were two massive incidents that occurred in his life that would have had a massive effect on him, and he said that he turned him into a monster. He also directed the film that is available on his YouTube channel. Running throughout it is his conversations with a therapist. But the main plot of the film is about his battle for making money in the trap and also making money for music. There is even scenes where his own friends are trying to tell him that he needs to come away from selling drugs and take music seriously. And he documents his tour around the UK at the time. And later on he speaks about how dependent people are on him, how much money and favours that he does and how lonely sometimes being rich can make you. His music was about depicting life in his neighbourhood on Church Road and he gave a voice to people that didn't feel they had one. And this was definitely depicted in his first mixtapes, Loyal to the Soil and Church Road to Hollywood. In his last interview with Chucky that was for JD, he talks about then going on to make songs for the radio and one of his most successful songs was I See You Shining and this is the song where he actually made reference to EncroChat as well. This was a year before EncroChat would be taken down. He goes on to speak in the interview with Chucky about being nominated for a MOBO in 2015, but not turning up due to his music not being played on the radio, and he just stayed on the block and in the trap. He started to take music seriously with the encouragement of Jamal Edwards, and appeared on SBTV warm-up sessions, and his first music video was directed by Morgan Keyes, who now manages Western. He spent a short stint in prison for drug offences. He released a mixtape before he went called Gone Till November. He talks in the interview with Chucky about going to the studio late at night before he was about to be sent to prison and recording the lyrics. He started to realise how famous he was becoming while he was in prison as well, when his Fire in the Booth was released. But then he also openly said in the interview that when he came home from prison, he just went straight back to selling drugs. A lot of fans had wrote to him as well, and when he came out, he visited some of them to say thank you. He said his only manager throughout his career was Jamal Edwards and that only lasted for two months. He doesn't go into the details as to why that broke up, he just said there was a little madness. And something that people must also remember as well is that he's a father and he had a child to provide for and sadly now that has been taken away for the foreseeable future. Nobody knows how long he's going to be gone for and due to the details of the messages it's all about character reference as well. So this is the latest developments in the EncroChat convictions. And I'm definitely going to keep you updated with some more news. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And check out the website at Scar City Studios. Merchandise is available now. Delivery worldwide. Peace.